What is up everyone, Movie Way, I'm back again with another video and today it's going to be my top 10 first time watches of 2022. Now I've just got a little bit of a criteria here, I am not including any movies from 2022 in this video because I'm going to be doing a top 10 2022 movies and ranking all them films in other videos pretty soon. I'm just going to be talking about 2021 movies or below here. So they could be from 1920, 1958, 1974. You get the gist. So 2021 or below. Also, I will not be including any 2021 movies that came out in the UK in 2022. Hope that makes sense to you. Now, there are a couple of 2021 movies in this list. However, we got them in the UK in 2021. Now, there's a couple of films I am going to talk about here that are 2021 films that came out in 2022 in my honourable mentions because I feel like this is my chance to talk about them, but I just didn't feel right putting them on the list. So I'm just going to get into them three now. Remember, these came out in 2022 in the UK, but they are 2021 movies. So I just want to give them three an honourable mention. If I decided to include these on the list, they will probably be quite high in the top ten. So highly recommend these three. Let's get into them. First up, we have Nitram, which stars Caleb Landy-Jones in one of the best performances I've seen from an actor in the last few years. And this is about a mentally unstable man who committed the Sydney Harbour Massacre. It's a true story, very, very gritty, realistic film. The way it's directed, everything about it is edge your seat stuff and you're just waiting for this guy to explode at any moment. Highly recommend that one. Next up, we have The Sadness, a virus pandemic movie where people are just going crazy and they're not quite zombies. They're just crazed lunatics running around committing all these murders and stuff. And I remember in the first 40 minutes, I was watching this going, wow, this is one of the best films I've ever seen. <laughs> it is let down a little bit by the last 20 minutes, but overall a solid horror film. And next up we have Boiling Point starring Stephen Graham. Now a lot of people will say this is a 2022 film, but it was released in the US before the UK, I believe. And we got it at the start of the year. Uh, this is title for this film is the, what it definitely should be called. It just shows the pressures of working in a restaurant, how much it's getting to these chefs who work there and just the industry as a whole so it's all done in a one shot take as well and i heard that they filmed this three times in one shot and just picked the best one so that is some epic filmmaking right there so that is my three honorable mentions for some 2021 movies that came out in the uk in 2022 Okay, guys, let's just get into the top 10 now. And I'm going to be doing this in the Blu-ray style because all of these films I own on Blu-ray. And hence, it is the reason why a lot of them are first-time watches. Apart from one movie, which you'll find out soon enough, isn't on Blu-ray. I don't think you can get it on physical media just yet. So let's just get into it now. Number 10. Number 10 is going to be Sam Raimi's Army of Darkness starring Bruce Campbell, and I can see why this guy Ash is a cult hero now. When I watched The Evil Dead 1 and 2, I could see him growing into a little bit of a better character, but here he is just off the scale. His dialogue, his one-liners, his mannerisms, just his character in general is amazing. He is the best thing about this film for sure. Now, The Evil Dead franchise is known for its comedic horror elements, but this is definitely the most comedic of the original three. And it works in its favour a lot. I like the way we go back to, I, th I don't know if it was 1100 or 1300 when the Book of the Dead was made. And uh, we have to go back to that time period. So that was good to come away from the cabin setting. Just show it up a little bit different. Great demon design. So many great scenes here as well. I love the start of the movie when it's kind of like Return of the Jedi where Ash has to go and find that demon in the pit and stuff. And this was just a really, really fun time. So. I watched this with the Evil Dead Rise coming out, and that has been pushed back now to April, so I might revisit this again near another time in 2023. But look out for my Evil Dead reviews. I'm going to be talking about this in spoiler form and everything coming to the channel next year, leading up to the Evil Dead Rise. But highly recommend this one. I had a great time with it. So that is Army of Darkness. 
Next up, we have Kingsman, The Secret Surface. Now, I had never really fancied this film, and I watched it because I think The Kingsman had just come out, and I wanted to get round to that film at some point, and I thought, you know what, I'll give this a go. But Taron Egerton, I don't know why, was just putting me off. After I'd seen the trailers and stuff, I thought, I just don't fancy that guy as an actor. And that's a weird thing to think. That is me just going into a movie totally wrong because he was great in this, such a good character. And it's kind of like a James Bond ripoff, basically. But without without being too comedic, it is it does have a lot of serious elements to it as well. Just a little bit sillier than the Bond films. But uh, I really had a fun time with this. My only letdown was Samuel L. Jackson, who I usually love in everything. He's got this stupid voice through the movie, and he brought it down just a little bit there. Overall, I had such a fun time. Great action flick with all great actors in there, Colin Firth and uh, Michael Caine. You know, just a really good film, really good film, and I can't wait to check out The Golden Circle. My plan was to watch the next two by now, but I just haven't got round to that. But uh, Golden Circle, I'm going to be watching this year at some point. Heard it's not very good. It's not as good as this one. But, you know, you've got to make your own mind up, haven't you? But glad I finally checked this out now. And I will not go into movies anymore with first perceptions of what it's going to be like. Because it's ended up on my top 10 first time watches of the year. So that is Kingsman, The Gold, The Secret Service. Next up is going to be... Olivia Wilde's Booksmart. Now, this was sent to me by my good friend Tom180. And Tom, you might be pleased to see that the movie you sent me has ended up in this video. Um, this is about two girls who have spent all their life kind of studying and staying away from parties and the weekend parties with their schoolmates and stuff and just wanted to be the best they can be with their education. And they feel like they've kind of missed out. So before graduation, they go to the final party of the year with all these students, and they don't kind of fit, or they feel like they don't fit. But it's kind of like super bad, really, just involving two girls instead. The chemistry between these two is great. It's such a funny movie, <laughs> you know? So many co funny characters around the students and stuff who they have to interact with and stuff. I just had a great time with this, I did, um, and it does go to show, kind of talking about my Kingsman, The Secret Service, first perceptions of people can kind of be wrong, as these two girls may learn throughout this movie, so yeah, highly recommend this one, just a fun comedy with a little bit of extra touch to it, and a great director by Olivia Wilde, so that is Booksmart. Next up, we have Dario Argento's Deep Red. Now, this is a 4K Arrow set, which is lovely, by the way. And I haven't seen too many Giallo films, but I definitely would watch a lot more now after seeing this. It's a great mystery movie. You're always guessing what's going on. Love the way Dario Argento filmed this. He put all the Italian Giallo styles in there with the music, just the way it's made. And it's a very, very dark film at times as well, but some great kill scenes in here. But the, the, the real core of this film is the story and the mystery surrounding everything. You're always intrigued, you're always engaged, and I thought it was just a very, very well done film. Uh, I think I watched the longer cut here. I kind of go into their movies watching the longer cuts because I just want more and what the director intended. Uh, but yeah, very, very solid movie. And uh, one that I thoroughly enjoyed and definitely one that deserves to be on this list. I did check out Argento's Dark Glasses, which I'll talk about in my ranking video after watching this, which is his newer film. Uh, but this is, up to now, out of all the films I have seen from him, this is his best. Uh, even better than Suspiria for me, which I think is kind of overrated. But yeah, solid, solid movie from Argento. Brilliant Giallo. Highly recommend. So that is Deep Red. Next up, we have another movie in a franchise I've already talked about, and that is The Evil Dead. For me, this is the most superior Evil Dead film. I know a lot of people will be shouting at the screen now, saying it's Evil Dead 2, or it's the, the original Evil Dead. But for me, this one just worked the best. Definitely the best way to do a modern horror remake. I love the way we our main character wasn't a goody-two-shoes or anything. She 
had their own problems and we had to try and get behind it and help like you want as a viewer for her to get better and get get through her troubles and stuff but it goes back to the cabin setting and the way this is filmed and shot is just awesome there's blood all over the screen there's one moment where it's actually pouring blood some of the gruesome moments just work so well i think someone's hands are getting torn off and hanging on by a thread at some point um just totally work for me this is definitely the way to do a modern remake and i hope the evil dead rise sort of takes a little bit of inspiration from this and the way this was made i know it's not meant to be connected but i hope i hope that it goes into the you know the way this one was made and put onto the screen because it just worked for me more i didn't mind evil dead the original definitely like two as well and three of course but a little bit goofy and stuff and this one is just balls to the wall hardcore horror shit so evil dead the remake from 2013 i believe had to be on this list it was friggin awesome next up we have i saw the devil a korean film that follows this serial killer who kills these women in the most brutal ways and he kills this guy's wife and this guy decides to come after him and toy with him and mentally get in his head and push him to the brink he knows who this killer is and he's gonna you know, sort of do what he does to these women by sort of playing him at his own game really and just torturing him mentally and physically this was a thrill ride from start to finish you didn't know which way it was going to go it's like a game of cat and mouse both ways at times I love these Korean films, they just do something a little bit different and this is definitely one of the best and most brutal crime cr thrillers that I've seen in years. I highly recommend it, so that is I Saw the Devil. Next up we have Ricky O, The Story of Ricky. Now I had heard this is one of the most violent films ever made and I hummed and hard about picking it up. I kept seeing it on the shelf in HMV and I pulled the trigger finally and I'm glad I did because this is a masterpiece in its own right. Everything this movie sets out to do, it does it so well. It is very, very hard to explain the tone and the atmosphere that this movie gives off, but I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. I have never seen a movie like this in my life. It was just so fun, so violent, but in a fun way type and entertaining way some of the costume and practical effect designs were hilarious but worked for what the movie was going for it's kind of like street fighter there's mortal Kombat in a prison that's kind of what it's like he has to defeat these like four bosses in each wing of the prison and stuff and the prison warden's got a hook for a hand and an eye patch just your typical villain <laughs> it's awesome and i highly recommend this movie to everyone it gives you something a little bit different. I had a great time with it. And just look at that cover there. I mean, he's just taken half a head off there. So that is Ricky O, the story of Ricky. Coming in at number three is going to be Paddington 2. Now, what really pushed me to watch this movie, apart from everyone else saying it was a great film, I watched The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent this year. And Pedro Pascal says to Nicolas Cage that his favourite movie, or one of his favourite movies, is Paddington 2. So him and Nick Cage watched the film, and they're both crying at the end and stuff, and I thought, you know what, I've got to watch Paddington 2 now. And you know what, this was such a heartwarming movie. Paddington is such a great character, voiced brilliantly, by the way. I forgot the guy's name who... who is it Ben Wishaw? I think he, or, he voices Paddington in the TV show as well. Does such a good job here. But my highlight of this film is when Paddington goes to prison. I think he's framed or he he, something he doesn't do. And uh, people mistake him for the crime. And he goes in there and his job is to wash the clothes. And some pink item falls into the, <laughs> into the washing machine by mistake. And all the prisoners' clothes are pink. <laughs> and they're all just staring at him, ready to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I had, I had a good time with this. I think Hugh Grant could have been a little bit better as the villain. Uh, but overall, a brilliant, heartwarming family adventure movie. And I can see now why people love this film. The first one as well I watched this year, it wasn't bad. But Paddington 2 was far superior. So yeah, Paddington 2 ended up in my top 10 of the year. Thank you, Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal. <laughs> 
Now, I did say there was going to be a couple of 2021 movies on this list that were released in the UK in 2021. And second, we have King Richard starring Will Smith. A lot of talk about Will Smith, wasn't there, at the Oscars. You know the story now, but he fully deserved the Oscar for this film. This is about Venus and Serena Williams' father, Richard Williams, who guides his daughters on how to play tennis and how he made them superstars. And he goes into he, he listens to his own voice in his head he doesn't just jump at any offer on the table he tells people who are higher than him in light in careers and stuff that he is the boss and stuff like that and he's just a, a character who knows his path in life and what he's got to do to get his daughters to be the best basically but it was a brilliant performance by will smith a great sports movie a true story as well and I love true stories that really capture you at the heart, basically, and that's what this film does. Uh, great characters all around as well. Um, I forgot the guy's name who plays the Punisher, oh, John Berthnell. He's great in this film. But if you like a sports movie, if you like a true story, definitely give King Richard a go. It was, it was absolutely awesome. I done my top 10 movies of 2022 last year before I'd seen this, but it has ended up on my ranking now, on my letterbox, in the top 10. So, number two is King Richard. Number one, though, is going to be the only movie that I don't own on physical media, because I don't think you can get it here in the UK, and that is the Oscar-winning picture, Coda. What a heartwarming, brilliant, feel-good film this was. This is basically about this young girl who was born into a deaf family, whole her family are deaf, and she is their interpreter, and they run this business, I think it's a fishing company, and she has to do all the dealings and stuff because they can't speak to anyone. She is the translator for the family, but she has her own aspirations and her own goals in life, and she needs to go that way while the family are going that way, and it kind of gives her, you know, she feels torn on what to do in life because she's got to sort of go with herself, and it could cripple the family business, or she's got to go this way and help her family out. Kind of like James Stewart's character in A Wonderful Life, where he is helping people out, but he wants to go his own way. Kind of like that, but I thought all the acting in this movie was great. I believe the deaf characters in this movie are deaf in real life. And you can watch this film with the subtitles or without, and you kind of still know what they are saying to the daughter. So, like, I remember I watched a few scenes after watching the movie without the subtitles, and you could definitely understand what was going on, what they were trying to say to her and stuff. And I thought that was a really good way to watch the film. If, I mean, you could watch it either way if you wanted. But, yeah, really, really, really great movie. This was streaming on Apple TV, I believe, and I thought it fully deserved the Oscar for Best Picture because I thought it was absolutely fantastic. So, number one is Coda. Okay, guys, that is it for my top 10 first-time watches of 2022. What were your favourite first-time watches of 2022? Leave it in the comments down below. What did you think of these films? Are you a fan? Are you not a fan? Have you seen them? Have you not? Let me know, and we'll get a little bit of discussion going. Thanks so much, guys. If you want more top 10s, they will be down below. Take it all easy, and I'll see you in the next video.